Commander. After hearing so much about the Federation's sense of fairness and justice, I was surprised that you sided with the Elidians. In all honesty, I expected more, especially from someone like you. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. On the Elidians' terms, apparently. I assume you were there, the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmare was upon them. I'm curious why the Elidians haven't fought back. They have the ability to retake the mines any time they want. Ability is one thing. Courage is another. The Elidians know any hostile action on their part will not end well. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. It wasn't designed as a warship. More for scientific research and exploration. But the Federation must have ships designed for war. Technically, there are Starfleet ships representing the Federation. But yes. I see. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. I have to say, I fully expected you to side with the Hotari, but obviously the Federation wants a steady supply of dilithium, something only we can offer. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. Left to the Hotari, it would be nothing short of a disaster. We're not on either side. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course... The question is, at what price? A major Sarlet Arminta, Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? You sound skeptical. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives, that it was more than just the storm, that somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Commander, if I could have a quick word with you. Of course. Commander Rydek, 
I have to admit, I was surprised when you said the Illidium should control the dilithium trade. I was under the assumption the Federation was neutral. But maybe I was wrong. I can assure you, we aren't on anyone's side. We are, and will remain, completely neutral. You have my word. I hope that's true. For all of our sakes. I saw you speaking with the Illidian. I'm sure they're painting themselves as the victims. The Illidians are under the impression the Hotari are somehow the cause of the Ion Storm. <laughs> Which I'm sure they attribute to our lack of experience or sheer inferiority. But we are as much the victims of this horrific storm as they are. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now they have the Queen's ear. For better or worse, depending on your perspective. I take it they're against a negotiated peace with the Illidians. Heroes tend to want more of what made them heroic. If it were up to them, they'd wage all-out war and bring ruin upon us all. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. Why would they do that? I don't know, but that's what concerns me. Whatever they're hiding, it can't be good. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Illidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. Oh. 
It is evident that presently the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. We need to know more. Well, couldn't we slow boat it out of here at impulse speed? It may come to that, but we don't know how far this warp dead zone extends. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Commander Westbrook, the Resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Lieutenant Commander Chovak's not so bad. You know, once you get used to him. And, uh, I've learned a lot working under him. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work harder to be a political animal like you, with this new first officer coming aboard. Far enough. Transporting the first probe into position. Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. can't get a handle on her. Commander Rydek. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge, but on the other, she did listen to my advice and use the whole polarity trick to get you through that excursion alive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of... well... 
one of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. I'll take that under advisement. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Whoa. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. With two points of data, the Resolute and the probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Cholok, sure. Well, if you're asking, I think you're a people person. After all, here we are, me, an enlisted officer, you, one of the senior staff, talking like old buddies. I should send Solano to talk to you. <laughs> Bring him on. I'm sure you can handle him. You've got potential. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack of all departments like you could be commander in chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. Of course, if you get an officer's commission, they'll put you on another ship. You know, I'd be the best leader Starfleet ever had. Lower decks always have to fix all the problems command causes. Maybe I just save everybody some steps. Well, don't forget about us little people when you're running things. Of course not. You gotta remember where you came from. Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. Mark. There it is again. I saw it. Seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. Got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. We're under attack and we didn't even know it. We need to stop them. Unplug whatever it is they're hitting us with. Now, look here. It's our current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations... They line up with the interference pattern. The storm and this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here... It's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear. This is no fluke. 
Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the Moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. Coming to peace talks in a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. For all their posturing, every indication is that the Elidians are afraid of the Hotari. They didn't bring their warship as a threat. They brought it because they're scared. From everything we witnessed, I would say that is highly likely. But what are they afraid of? Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they change their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Sidron was very curious when we spoke outside the Queen's chamber. He wanted to know all about us, our ship, the Federation. He wasn't giving any answers. He was looking for them. Well, I'm sure you didn't tell him too much. I don't think the Elidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Armentis said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hatari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harnessed the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present, far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Elidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. We've received an urgent call from Hotari. Queen's advisor, Tylus, has asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Citron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. Got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but... I have to go. Tylus! Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. I'm the one who got her into this. If something happens to her, it's my fault. She's one of the Queen's closest advisors. I'm sure she'll be fine. Assuming the Queen isn't part of this. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tylus suspects this came from the mines on Tau. Hmm. It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the Resolute, but if this came from the mines, 
that it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Illidians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith, which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Otherwise, it could put us in a difficult position. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough, at least to satisfy the Federation. Mm. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption and targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation.